Hey, everybody, this is TJR. And this is Robert Kinsler. And welcome to the news. This is the weekly show where uh, the two of us get together. We talk about music news headlines that have caught our interest, new releases that have caught our interest that we just are excited to talk about. Uh, we can't cover all the music news that comes out every week, but we just talk about what we can. And we thank you for joining us. And if it's your first time, welcome aboard. Uh, before we get started, we just want to remind you to please click like so that the YouTube algorithm recognizes us. And also, please uh, stay till the end of the video. That helps out these videos an awful lot. Even if you happen to leave the room to get some coffee, let the video play till the end. Anyways, let's get started. So um, we both got a lot of stuff we want to talk about. I, first of all, want to talk about uh, a new band that dropped an album on Monday, and it's a new grunge supergroup featuring members of Soundgarden and Nirvana and Pearl Jam. And I'm going to read from Rolling Stone here, and then I'm going to talk about the album. Um, Soundgarden guitarist Kim Thale, hopefully I say that right, Nirvana bassist Chris Novoselic, and Soundgarden and Pearl Jam drummer Matt Cameron have joined forces to form Third Secret. The new supergroup also features Bubba Dupree, guitarist for trailblazing DC hardcore outfit Void, and vocalists Jennifer Johnson and Jillian Ray, who also performed with Nova Selleck's other band, Giants in the Trees. Third Secret surprised fans by dropping their debut self-titled LP Monday Night, which was primarily recorded and mixed by famed grunge era producer Jack Endino. The band also recently performed a secret show at Seattle's Museum of Pop Culture, which Cameron shared a photo of on Instagram. So, um, so this album dropped on Monday. It's only available for digital streaming. There is no physical release, CD or vinyl, that you can pre-order at this time. It's just a digital release. But I have to tell you, after hearing this album, and I've listened to it a couple of times now since it dropped, I really want a physical release. I want to be able to get a CD or vinyl copy of this album. Uh, this is, I mean, I had a friend I was talking to who said he really missed the 90s. He really missed all those bands like Soundgarden, Pearl Jam, and, you know, that, that he kind of felt like music just kind of ended there. Uh -huh. And if I could talk to him now, I'd say, okay, go check out this album. It's a self-titled album by Third Secret. Go check it out. Because it's, it is... It is that 90s era of rock, uh -huh. which in many cases I say was, as far as the mainstream is concerned, was the last great hurrah for heavy rock music. Right. That era, right. that whole right. era of, of, of Soundgarden, Stone Temple Pilots, that 90s era. Right. Um, we haven't seen, right yeah. Yeah, yeah, we haven't seen a real mainstream revival. Rock still is out there. It's not dead, but it's mm -hmm. just not part of the mainstream anymore. And I'm referring to heavy rock, of course. Right. But you're, yeah. You're, you're right. Yeah. This is a great album. I don't want to say it's a throwback to the 90s. It's just a continuation is all it is. Not a throwback in any stretch of the word, uh, stretch of the imagination. But, you know, look who's in this band. Yeah. And uh, how can it not be? Exactly. And, you know, I have to say, um, TJ, I, I didn't know about it until you told me. I guess, it, like you said, it dropped as a surprise. I didn't get a press release, and I've been so immersed uh uh, you know, with other things for, with my columns and stuff, but yeah, so I'm definitely, you know, going to check that out. There's no doubt that I, I really want to hear that album. So if you, if you've checked out that album, let us know in the comments and, if, or if you plan on, let us know. Well, TJ Coachella is back. It, it's yes. hard. I can't believe I'm even saying that for the first time since April of 2019, Coachella Valley Music and Arts Festival has returned to Indio, California. Uh, weekend one kicked off April 15th through the 17th, and then the annual Music Bash will continue with basically the same lineup of artists on the same stages and everything for the second weekend, which will be held April 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. You know, they they for the last 10 years, including this year, they've been live streaming uh, many of the most highly anticipated performances. So I got to watch those uh, this weekend and I will be there on weekend two to then, you know, check out maybe some of those same bands I saw on YouTube and maybe other artists that I didn't get to see. So I'm really looking forward to it. 
But what I want to talk about um, today specifically is it was a total surprise. The day before day one, uh, they announced that Arcade Fire was going to uh, perform. Now, Arcade Fire is one of the all-time legendary famous bands that, that has played at Coachella. They've delivered some really memorable sets out there, and they have a new album coming out May 6th. So they, they made this appearance uh, in one of the tents instead of one of the huge stages so it was packed in there i watched the live stream and uh, uh, did some great songs off their next album we um, which is coming out like i said in, in early may and some of these songs were are just really incredible i can't wait to hear this album based on that performance and there was one moment where win butler who's the uh, the guitarist and lead singer he had to stop performing um one of the tracks because he was so emotional he was obviously so <laughs> thankful that they could be back, you know, on a stage performing and they were back at Coachella, which has been one of the the venues that has kind of made them kind of the international, you know, sensation that they are. So apparently the word is that they're not going to be back there the weekend that I'm going. Mm -hmm. So I am very thankful that Golden Voice and YouTube, um, you know, allowed the live stream of so many of the performances uh, weekend one. So who else did you see that you really liked? Well, really, uh, and I think I mentioned this maybe last time, this has really been uh, a festival kind of about diversity and not only in where in musical styles. I mean, we get rock, we get rap, we get electronica, you know, you get all these different styles, you know, and stuff. But also you, you have some artists from around the world, like there's a band, uh, they're, they're called The Who, and I may be mispronouncing it, it's The H-U, and they're okay. actually from... They're from Mongolia. They're uh -huh. they play they they play this really hard, heavy metal kind of rock, but they also use some of the and I'm not gonna try to butcher the names, they mm -hmm. use some of these really unusual instruments mm -hmm. from their native nation, and they incorporate that with with the sound. So it gives them a sound of their own. Mm -hmm. They were impressive. I saw them. Um, I also got to see, uh, and she's from India. I'm gonna hopefully I'll say her name right. Her name is Ravina, and she mm -hmm. kind of combines um like Indian music, but also with with a westernized pop and R and B music, and she has a great voice. Her soul, her soul sound, kind of harkens back more to like '70s soul. It's not as much like the the modern R and B that you kind of hear now. But mm -hmm. I really liked it, and the and the audience really seemed to warm up to her, and and um, she put on a great show. And then also uh, very impressed with uh, um, a singer. Um, her name is, and hopefully I'll say her name right too, Bishop Briggs. And she reminded me a mix of kind of a cross between Billie Eilish and Florence Welch of Florence and the Machine. And mm -hmm. um, I thought she was really terrific. And I guess um, she lost her sister. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know what the situation, they flashed the name of her sister, Kate. And she, you know, it had the year she, you know, was born, I think in like in the early nineties and then she passed away in 21. So that was a very emotional and powerful performance too. But at Coachella, you always get this like artists that I may not be very familiar with You're yeah. introduced to them and they might really impress you. And that's one of the reasons I do love to watch the live streams. Mm -hmm. And I love to go to the festival because I make so many discoveries, whether in the past year, like a band like Keen or, you know, whoever it might be, where they just blow me away or arcade fire. And then I become a huge fan. Cool. I look forward to hearing what you have to say about uh, next weekend after you get back. Well, next, I want to talk about another new release, uh, this time by an artist that uh, a lot of us are probably familiar with. Jewel is releasing a new album. In fact, it's already out. It came out this weekend. It's only available on streaming services right now. There will be a physical release on both CD and vinyl in the next uh, couple of weeks. Oh, and by the way, it's a really good album. I'll talk more about it in just a moment here. I've heard it. But first I wanted to just uh, talk about a story here in Spin. Uh, it was entitled Jewel Sets the Record Straight. And this is an article about you know the album, but it's also an interview about her life. And it, it sheds some interesting light onto a well-known story about how prior to making it huge, she lived in her car. And I'm sure you've heard that story too. A lot yes. of us have about her. But in this story, she, she shed a little bit of light onto that story. But uh, I want to quote from this story. This is in Spin. And let me just go ahead and just read here. The otherwise musically mononymous Jewel Kilcher story could be a lesson in real life fairy tales. The rural Alaska native who yodeled with her cowboy musician dad 
slept enchantedly under star-filled skies with her ranch animals, and was so free-spirited she once lived out of her car, taking photos to prove it. Smiling, guitar in hand, by the time she was 20, she had signed a deal with Atlantic Records, and in 1995, she released her multi-platinum debut, Pieces of You. Now, in this interview, that's that's the buildup, and I think it's important to hear that. In yeah. the interview, there's a quote here from Jewel where she talks about this. She says, the big misconception, I think, in my career was that I was living in my car for my dream, Jewel tells me. That was not the case. I was living in my car because a boss wanted to have sex with me. And when I wouldn't, he wouldn't give me my paycheck. It was gritty and nothing about dreams. It was just about the pride of saying, I will not have sex with you. And if I have to live in my car, so be it. And this was like just this incredible um, revelation here to this story that we've all known about. It's almost, it almost feels like a folktale yeah. when you hear it. And then to hear this, this horrible truth behind it, yeah. I thought was just startling. It was very brave of her to talk about. But I also found it very inspiring to hear her say that, that she just stood her ground. Yeah. You know, I, you know, I'm not going to do this for a paycheck. Mm -hmm. Um, she goes on, uh, to talk about how from the beginning, she prioritized her mental health over all else. Uh, in quotes, I made myself a promise that my number one job was to learn how to be happy, whole human, and not a human full of holes. She says, my number two job was to learn to be a musician as a musician. I wanted to be a great singer songwriter more than I wanted to be famous. I wanted to try and go for being one of the greats, and that's a really ambitious goal. It's it's a goal that's a 60-year arc, not a five-year arc. Mm -hmm. And just, again, really impressed um, with, um, with having the, the, just the realization of self and the confidence of self to just decide these things, yeah. to say that to become a great, it's a lifetime thing it's a life you know it's a lifetime goal it's not going to happen in five years and it's i just thought this was profound to hear her say this that you know you you don't you know tom petty once said you know you don't create great music in five or ten years it takes decades it takes a lifetime of work to create a great to create great music i just was very impressed by this story it's on spin online if you want to read the whole interview yeah. Recommend you do. But let's talk about the album. The album is called Free Will and Woman. And she says that this is the first album she's recorded from scratch, meaning that instead of writing a bunch of songs and then bringing them into the studio, she, she worked with the band that she was recording with and they just started writing together as, as a group. And, you know, someone would have a bass lick. She would start to come up with a melody. You know, everybody just kind of contributed. And they just created there in the studio. Mm -hmm. And what's emerged on this album is something I think really cool and unique. Um, this is very much her soul album. Her vocalizing is, is, there is something raw that I've never heard from her before that comes out in her singing. And I'll have to admit, I don't, I'm not familiar with her whole catalog. Maybe she's done this in the past, but I haven't heard it if she has. But she's really just pulling deep inside of herself and just singing with this incredibly soulful voice, sometimes very rough and raw voice that I've never heard from her before. And there are flashes of her you know, folk roots, her country roots. Mm -hmm. There are flashes of pop, but mostly it's, it's pretty much like a, a rock and soul album. And so quite a surprise and, but really, really enjoyable. And if you're, if you haven't heard it, I recommend you go check it out. It came out this, it came out this last weekend. Well worth your time. I'll have to do that. I haven't, I haven't heard the album yet. So yeah, I'll def, yeah, you definitely piqued my interest. So I'll do that. So right now, what I want to talk about is actually a band we both know very well, mm -hmm. and that's the Rolling Stones. Yes. Now let's, uh, let's rewind back in time to the very beginnings of the Rolling Stones kind of storied history. In 1964, the band arrived to absolute mayhem for their first ever show in New York City which was after the release of their debut album, which was called, are you, let's, you kind of ready for it? The yes. Rolling Stones. Yes. So, okay. So they, um, it was only fitting then you fast forward uh, 40 years 
to January of 2003. And as part of the band's 40th anniversary tour, they made a point to go to New York and where else are they going to perform but Madison Square Garden? Mm -hmm. Well, that legendary performance now is coming to a variety of formats, DVD, CD, Blu-ray, um, uh, three LP. Uh, I'm probably leaving something out, but it's, but it's coming out on June 10th. So you're going to be able to get that show in any configuration and combination that you basically want to. Um, and this performance was originally released back on HBO back in 2003, but mm -hmm. now it's been restored and remastered both the visuals and the audio. So we're going to get, uh, you know, obviously a great pristine performance. I haven't seen any of it yet, but I'm looking forward to it. But it also includes uh, four previous tracks that were left off the HBO telecast. Mm -hmm. So we're also going to get Start Me Up, Tumbling Dice, Give Me Shelter and Sympathy for the Devil. Those are some pretty cool tracks yeah. that are going to be included this time. And um, so, like I said, that's coming out later this spring. Um, and, uh, and I guess uh, one little bit of tidbit of information too, is when the band did honky tonk woman, uh, they were joined by special guest Cheryl Crow for that performance. Oh, okay. So, cool. and, and then in addition, um, and I don't know if this is on the LPs or everything, but, but what the press release said that they said the addition of three bonus performances from Amsterdam and rehearsal footage gives an insider's view of the Rolling Stones gearing up for this tour. So, um, and then if you get the Blu-ray package, I guess you get an additional 51 minute documentary. So like I say, probably go to the Rolling Stones official website or Amazon closer to the date of the release. And you can check out which configuration you want to purchase. I definitely feel like um, if I was going to, what I'd want to see most is the Blu-ray, I think. Yeah. I'd want the visuals and the music. I think what I'd most, that would be the one I'd pick if I had to pick only one. But exactly. great news, yeah. Uh, actually, and it's interesting that you bring up the Rolling Stones because that leads into what I want to talk about next, right? Uh, which is a new solo track by Mick Jagger. And I'm going to just read it from Pitchfork here. Uh, the headline reads, the Rolling Stones Mick Jagger shares new song entitled Strange Game. Let me just read first a little bit about the, the genesis of the song here. Mick Jagger has released a new song, Strange Game, the Rolling Stones frontman, co-wrote the track with composer Daniel Pemberton. Strange Game serves as the theme song for the new Apple original series, Slow Horses. Then, of course, they give you a link and you can check this all out on the site, but you can also pull up this song on any streaming service. I listened to it on Tidal and it is a great track. It is. Um, and I, this, just, just, I listened to it as well, TJ. Yeah, Love yeah. it. And boy, uh, you know, Mick Jagger's signature you know, grind it, snarl and, and, and stuff. It's just a great song. Yeah. His great vocals are fantastic on this track. And the song has such a guttural feel to it. It does. It feels like something it, that could have been recorded during the like early mid sixties. Uh -huh. It just has that, just that rough feel. It feels like it could have been recorded by the stones. It wasn't of yeah. course, but it definitely has just that really rough and tumble feel to it. Um, th some of the, uh, there's a little bit more from the story I'm just going to read here about this, about uh, behind the track here. In a recent interview with Rolling Stone, Jagger explained, out of the blue, I got an email from a guy I didn't know, composer Daniel Pemberton. He continued, I'd heard of him because he'd done quite a lot of TV and film music, English guy, and he'd gotten a lot, a lot of kudos and nominations for awards, he said. Uh, so he said, would you be interested in doing this TV theme? I'm always up for doing something different. Just a great song. You don't have to watch the TV show if you want to check out the song. You can check it out on any streaming service. Highly recommend it. And of course, still excited and wondering about this new Stones album that's still yet forthcoming, this, yeah. this album of new original material that they began before Charlie Watts is passing away. Still real interested in knowing more. We did get that one advanced track you know living yeah. in ghost town yeah a while right ago on. but yeah we're wondering what's going to happen with that we'll have to wait and yeah. see yeah i i sure hope it it happens now from the rolling stones let's go over not too far away to the blues yes because there's brand new news yeah. from walter trout one of my favorite uh you know rock and blues artists that he's going to release I, I can't even get my head around this he's going to release his 30th album his solo album and it's going to be released in a few months he said, it's a very short announcement. Let me just read it. Uh, he sent it out to, 
to his fans yesterday. He said, I'm incredibly happy to announce the release of my 30th album. It will be released wow. in a few months. Just like my live shows often are a ride through feelings and different moods from introspection to full-blown emotional release, this album is a ride through time and places shared with all the passion that is in my heart. I can honestly say that I've never been more excited about releasing new music. After two years of involuntary time off due to the pandemic, I was bursting with inspiration uh, to write and share my, um, my music. So um, you can learn more about his album. It's at waltertrout.com. And um, he, there's also an advanced track that I listened to once yesterday when I got it, and it sounds great. So I'm looking forward to listening to that again and seeing if he's going to release some more advanced tracks. But great that um, Walter Trout, as, as people may or may not know, he had a liver transplant um, a few years back, and, and he's been to, through hell and back. But he's made an amazing recovery i've seen him a few times since then and uh it's great that he's continuing to be so inspired and, and kind of move forward great news to hear i'm glad to hear that he's doing better and of course walter trout of course is legendary to blues fans but uh here in the united states he's well known by blues fans but in but in the uk i understand he is so much his his popularity is so much larger. Oh, yeah. Than here like, I know when he plays in, like, uh, in in the Netherlands or he plays in Europe, Germany, and the UK and stuff. Yeah, I know they, they did a survey of, like, the greatest guitarists of all time, and he was in the top 10. I mean, he's up there with Eric Clapton and Jimi Hendrix and Stevie Ray Vaughan. I mean, he's widely acknowledged there. Now, what happened here is when he was in his 50s, he finally started getting booked at some of these major blues festivals around America, and that's where the American public finally started to discover him, mm -hmm. uh, you know, at, at the level that he deserves. So he has over the last few years become a major player here in the U S and that's been great to see, you know, he's, he's um, you know, a real treasure because the guy has it all. He can write amazing songs that probe, you know, kind of like the deepest of emotions he has, you know, his guitar skills are just off the charts, but he's also a phenomenal singer. And so he's, yeah. Kind of like somebody like John Fogarty, he's he, he truly is a full package. Or like Joe Bonamassa, he's amazing. And I should I should mention that um, decades back, my band at the time got to open for him. This was before he was getting the rec all the he had the recognition uh -huh. in in Europe, but not here in the U.S. And it was just a small you know local club, yeah, that he was playing at. And I we got the opportunity to open for him. And I remember. At that time, people from Europe would come over to America to see him play in an intimate setting. That's right. They That's could. Right. Uh -huh. They couldn't do that in, in, in Europe because he was right. huge out there. And uh, and I, I met him. He briefly did come to me afterwards um, and, and, and said, hey, good job, you know. Yeah. And that was very nice of him. You know, he did. He didn't have to do that. He's always he's always been supportive. Uh, I knew another, you know, like a you know, up and coming blues artist, and he was very young and he was on like a local cable show and he lived in the same community as Walter and Walter ran into him like and ran into him and said and complimented him. And my friend was shocked because he was, you know, just starting out. He was just starting to, you know, play lead guitar and things like that. And Walter is very encouraging. He really supports the blues community. And one thing that he told me when I interviewed him, and this was many years ago, um, he said for the, for the, you know, blues music is great. It has this amazing history and traditions, but for it to survive, it can't just live in a museum. People have to go out and make it their own and stuff. And Walter Trout has made the blues his own. And that's what, and he is a great champion of the style and of the genre. And it's, and it's, uh, like I said, every every time I we get news that we're going to get another tour or another album from him, that's something really to celebrate. Cool. Go check out the album, everybody. Yeah. So I want to close uh, our show here tonight with something very funny. Yesterday, Superfan texted me a news headline, as she often does. And this particular one, I read it and I had to do a double take. And I'm going to read. This was from USA Today. British rock band, The Who, announces 2022 tour. Okay, nothing unusual so far. But right. then the rest says, returns to stage after 43-year hiatus. Yeah. Wow. And underneath that, 
for the first time since their 1979 concert disaster, which left 11 people dead after a crowd surge, the who are returning to the stage. Oh my God. Wow. Now I remember this tragedy. Now wasn't this story supposed to run on April 1st? You know, if it had, that's what I thought. Was was this an April fool's gag that was this an April 1st headline, uh, you know, belayed or something. And I looked at it. No, no, it was, it was yesterday's date. Wow. You know, and I pulled this up. I thought, what is going on here? Did I suddenly like wake up in the morning in an alternate universe where the who didn't play for 43 years where they retired? I I remember this disaster when it happened. It was a tragic thing. That's why I thought this couldn't be an April fool's joke because it's not funny. Yeah. Yeah, Because you're dealing with a real world tragedy that happened, Yeah, you know, where, yeah, but I, I looked at this. I thought, what is going on? There was a video that went with it. And the video was just about Townsend and Daltrey talking about them launching their new tour. And Daltrey even mentions we're using the same road crew we've had for the last 40 years. So it's, it's like family. And I'm like, yeah, how could they make such an error with this? Right. What wow. is going on here? And I kept looking at this thinking, you know, I will, I will say TJ and I, and I, and I don't want to be specific to this case because yeah. I don't want to, you know, throw any slings and arrows at anybody, but as newspapers have been hit with major cutbacks and everything yeah. like that, what you have for a lot of times you have people that maybe let's say they're a court reporter, a police reporter, maybe they, they cover business. All of a sudden they're, they're dipping their toes into music or yeah. entertainment coverage that ha- that's happened at some of the newspapers where I've, where I formerly was a contributing writer and they said, Hey, we can save money by not having contributor writing, contributing writers like Robert Kinsler. We'll yeah. get, let's say our beat reporter and they, they might not have the background, let's say on a, on an artist. I know the who's very famous, yeah. but they may not, they simply may not know much. I mean, and the, and, and I'm not, this won't be a surprise to any music writers mm-hmm. out there. Yeah. What Good I'm to hear your perspective on that. Cause I was just like, what the heck is going on with this? Yeah. Now here's the thing today. I looked up the same exact story and now the headline reads British rock band, the who announces 2022 tour returns to stage. That's okay. it. Okay. Underneath it reads the iconic band's upcoming North American tour brings singer Roger Daltrey and guitarist songwriter Pete Townsend back after their 2019 tour. Okay. So no, the who did not invent some kind of time travel. A little bit of, little bit of fixing, getting everything fixed yeah. up. And, but, and I will say, and on a, on a similar note, because I knew we were going to talk about this. I, I hadn't read the story, so I was shocked by some of the terminology. In the, but I did a little bit, bit of investigating I, on Google because I go, you know, I think the who's done a few farewell tours and kind of like Kiss. and Yeah. Kind of there was a, a headline I found or something back in 1982 where the who had completed their farewell tour. I guess it's, you know, so I guess the who's invented time travel. They're still on that farewell tour and it's not 1982. It's 2022. Exactly. So these guys need deserve all kinds of kudos beyond great, creating some great music. Yeah. But they've pulled off a pretty amazing scientific feat here too. They have. Yes. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. I, it's, it's amazing how many times they can call it their farewell tour and nobody yeah. seems to get upset. I guess because they, you know, we want to keep seeing them perform live. Yeah. You know, yeah. but yeah, it is yeah, amazing. And I, and I have to tell you, I, I don't, you know, and I, I, I haven't seen the who live in a while. I have, I had seen them live, but I, after John Antwistle passed away, I just don't, I think when they were just left with Roger and, and Pete, I don't, you know, my personal feeling is they should not have, no, should no longer call it the who it's you yeah know. and i know we could go down the weeds and talk about should the stones now that charlie watts has passed away and yeah Bill Wyman, it's not with the band you know should they be calling them so i mean and i know we've touched on this so many times and this probably isn't the right forum for this that, is but probably we'll not to, the right time to do yeah. that but i know exactly what you're saying you know pink floyd you know for the last couple albums has just been two guys basically yeah two guys you know? exactly um yeah so it's is it really the same is it really the same band yeah. anymore but i can understand why you'd want to call it the name of that band because yeah. that's what because it's just that's how the public reacts they're going to buy right. it if it's called you know if you know if they're, they're gonna they're just gonna buy it they're just gonna go yeah. for it more you know they're just yeah. gonna get be more of an audience for it yeah. 
So it just makes, from a business standpoint, it makes sense. I mean, it does. Yeah, it, it, it's you know, and I have to say, question. Maybe the last thing I'll say on it is I don't want to be a total hypocrite because I totally champion the zombies, and they're down right now to, to their you know Colin Blundstone, who's their singer, and then Rod Argent, who plays keyboards, and they have newer members. But it, but but the lineage has some of the other guys have voluntary said hey they no longer wanted to tour and they've done it with the blessing but it's been a really smooth transition and, and I don't think that they've ever tried to fool anybody you know yeah. they've said you know featuring Colin Blundstone and Rod Argent and I think it works for the zombies but for example I think you two I don't believe that they could go out with if they lost any of those four members after this many years together I don't believe it would be you two but again. Yeah. Maybe we'll have to Who bring knows? it up. At a, you know, of course, ZZ Top's going out without Dusty Hill now. So, yeah, you know, so I don't know. It's but on the other hand, though. once John Bonham died, Led Zeppelin called it quits. They did. And just they said, did. that's it. There's no more. And I don't know, yeah. maybe this, like, this is a whole topic that I think yeah. you and I need to do a show about yeah. in the future and really discuss the heck out of it. So yeah. uh, let us know if you'd like to see that show. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but for now. Uh, that's the news that we want to talk about this week. Um, join us next time. And uh, for a whole bunch of new stuff, we don't know what it's going to be till it happens. That's why it's called the news. And as always, if you like what we do here, be sure to click like, click subscribe, hit the bell notification icon so you never miss a video. And lastly, I want to give a big shout out and thank you to the patron supporters who help uh, help us make more videos. And if you'd like to see your name in the credits, like you're seeing right now, Go to patreon.com forward slash TJR, the original, and make a pledge. If you can't make a pledge, that's fine. We understand. Just click like. And lastly, thank you, everybody, who let this video play out to the end, because that also helps the YouTube algorithm recognize us and recommend us to other people as well. So thank you very much for sticking around till the end. Thank you, everybody. We appreciate it. Take care. We'll see you next time.